we've also got some drifting snow across the higher routes of the Pennines in particular, with these brisk easterly winds blowing also across eastern areas of Scotland. Many spots across the north of England will see temperatures rise unusually through the night with that milder feeling air. Very mild towards the south, 9 to 11 degrees Celsius temperatures are below freezing I think for parts of Scotland but tomorrow that warm front continues to push uh, that uh, milder air in from the south it's moving northwards bringing the snow risk across central northern areas of Scotland we're likely to see some accumulations over the Grampians the Highlands in particular to lower levels turning quite quickly back to rain but brisk easterly winds for eastern Scotland and down through northeast England where this should be falling as rain some early winteriness perhaps for the Pennines and for the hills of Northern Ireland but again a wide range of temperatures between 4 and 13 degrees Celsius. We're all coming into that milder feeling air over the course of the weekend, but a very messy picture, some brightness, some showers, brisk wind still in the north. Do keep an eye on the forecast on your weather app. Sophie. Elizabeth, thank you. And that's it from the BBC News at 10. Newsnight is already getting underway on BBC Two with Victoria on BBC One. It's time to join our news teams where you are. Good night. Thanks, Sophie, and welcome to the late Look North. Good evening, I'm Alison Freeman. The manhunt for chemical attack suspect Abdul Shakur Azadi focused on North Tyneside today. Eight days since he disappeared, armed police have raided two addresses in North Tyneside. Azadi is wanted for attempted murder after a mother and her two children were injured by a corrosive liquid in Clapham. Our news correspondent Mark Denton has the latest. Forest saw North Tyneside last night and armed police carry out searches. Two searches were made in the area of addresses associated with Abdul Azadi, including his place of work. This was a joint operation between Northumbria and the Metropolitan Police Forces. No arrests were made at either location. Local people say the road was cordoned off and police dogs were used in searches of the Best Bite takeaway and a flat above the business in Forest Hall. One resident told Look North, police left after two hours and did not appear to take anything away with them. Today, local people gave their reaction. It's, it, yeah, it's quite shocking. Um, I'm not really from around here, I'm up the road, but it's, um, yeah, it is on the doorstep. It's pretty scary. In this area, I've never heard of anything like that before. I mean, I've seen it on the news. It's very unsettling because it's very local, isn't it? You know, but what can you do? Together, catch on the better. You know, I don't think people realise that what happened in London could reverberate around here as well. Unsettling, it's sad it's happened, but uh, hopefully they'll catch him. After raids on several properties in Newcastle earlier this week, today's North Tyneside raids another reminder. Eight days on, as Aidy's links to the North East are also being pursued by police. Mark Denton, BBC Look North, Forest Hall, North Tyneside. The site on Teesside could be home to a new way of generating nuclear power. Four so-called small modular reactors could be installed in an industrial area at Seal Sands near Billingham. The scheme, which could be up and running in the early 2030s, is being developed by the Cumbria-based Community Nuclear Power Company, with the reactors supplied by the American power giant Westinghouse. Now, they are the future of our workforce, but in the last decade, there has been a significant fall in the number of apprentices. Since 2015, the number of people starting apprenticeships in the Northeast has dropped by more than half. But on a visit to County Durham today, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, insisted the government is training up the highly skilled workers our economy needs. Here's our political editor, Richard Moss. Pragmatic makes extremely clever electronics at this County Durham factory. Tech is keen to show the visiting Chancellor. But Jeremy Hunt is also here to meet super smart staff like Sadie Dickinson from Middlesbrough, 18 months into a six year placement and enjoying learning and earning. I've started from scratch, so everything I've done so far has been brand new to me. And everything that I'm doing is just helping me with my growth to become an engineer. 
But the problem is there are fewer Sadies than there once were. In 2015, 38,230 people in the North East started apprenticeships. In 2022, that was down to 18,460, a drop of more than 50%. The Chancellor, though, insists that's because the emphasis is now on quality. We are creating a system like in Germany, where people who do apprenticeships get the same uh, esteem in society as people who go through the university system. That's always been the gap we've had. So that, that has been a change, but we have bought in rigour, and the result is that we have a programme where everyone across the country who wants to do an apprenticeship has been able to do it. But Labour says the government's approach is failing employers and young people and needs an overhaul. We have a proud industrial heritage here. The Labour Party has a plan to deliver on a new industrial revolution for our region. To do that, we have to get business to invest here. And when we're speaking to businesses, which is quite a lot at the moment, they can't find the skilled workforce. So we have to put the training in place to get people up to speed. Tech like this has the capacity to help our economy grow, but it needs people too. And in this election year, the parties will be battling it out over who can unlock the region's talent pool. Richard Moss, BBC Look North, in Durham. Now, how do you fancy owning a 12th century pile that's played its part in many of the great upheavals in British history? Appleby Castle in the Eden Valley in Cumbria with a hotel, museum and private living space could be yours if you can rustle up nine and a half million pounds. Ultimately, the, the, the buyer for something like this is, is, is clearly going to be, be someone who, who's going to want to invest, probably going to want to spend a bit of money in, in doing what they want to do to, 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 to the castle. It's been looked after magnificently over the years by the current custodian and you know, for something like this to come up the first time in over 20 years is, is a really exciting opportunity for someone to come and, come and make their mark. It looked OK in Appleby, didn't it? But there is a yellow weather warning in place for snow tonight. Here's Paul Mooney with the forecast. Good evening. We'll still get that mix of rain, sleet and snow overnight. Gradually, though, over the next day or so, things start to turn a bit milder. Some heavy rain at lower levels, some sleety deposits, some more snow accumulating over the high ground, blowing around as well on a gusty easterly wind. Another batch of more widespread rain edging in later in the night. Temperatures will dip close to freezing, obviously, where there's snow around. So rain in eastern areas tomorrow morning. Still some hill snow, drier in the west, and the rain becomes more patchy through the day. Many places drying up as we head into the afternoon. A milder day, temperatures eventually in those easterly winds reaching a high around about 8, maybe 9 degrees Celsius. The weekend, low pressure in charge, it stays unsettled, but it will be rain at times rather than sleet or snow for most of us. That's it from the late team. We'll be back tomorrow morning during breakfast, but in the meantime, sleep well. Good night. Which in Manchester?